Um, well, hello, everybody. Uh, nice, to, nice to meet you all. Um, as Salting uh, said, I run F3 Life, um, which provides tools to traditional and non traditional credit providers to help them incorporate requirements for uh, climate smart agriculture into loan terms uh, and a system uh, that allows those credit providers to verify visually. Uh, that, those, uh, that those measures are being complied with. Uh, and just by, by way of introduction, um, I co-founded this, this company together with a, a Kenyan colleague, Obadiah Ngigi. Um, it came out of our experiences negotiating payments for ecosystem services contracts in East Africa, um, where there were two key realizations. The first was that uh, um, uh, when smallholder farmers are under contract, for uh, provision of ecosystem services or implementing measures that improve delivery of ecosystem services, they are very responsive to those contracts. Um, secondly, um, uh, the transaction costs involved with, so I guess, sort of bespoke uh, payments for ecosystem services projects often overwhelm the, the sort of the, the theoretical, theoretical good that they do. Um, uh, and really, you know, after sort of the experience of those payments for ecosystem service contracts, we were looking for something that was highly replicable and highly scalable. Um, and, and, and this sort of solution that we arrived at in F3 Life uh, was, was, was where we arrived at, um, which is the, uh, the system that we provide. Um, critical to just point out that F3 Life does not provide credit itself. It works with third party provider of credit, providers of credit to smallholder farmers. Uh, and under step one of our methodology, when a farmer signs a loan agreement, they also sign uh, a, a, an agreement stating how they will manage their land in a climate smart or, or sort of environmentally friendly manner. Um, and that can include the, uh, the, the planting of trees. Um, under step two, uh, the farmer repays their loan um, and also implements the, the practices that were required under their, their, their loan agreement and their land management agreement. So this is where uh, you, you see farmers begin to respond to the environmental conditionality of their, of their loan terms. Um, under step three, our systems are used to verify that those practices have been implemented. Um, and we use a sort of a geotag smart photograph approach, um, and are currently augmenting that with the ability to use drone and satellite imagery to, to undertake those verifications as well, uh, where appropriate. Um, under step four, uh, the information that we collect is then scored um, and then passed back to the financial institution for inclusion within their, their credit scoring algorithm or credit scorecard. Um, and that then affects the farmer's ability to raise debt in the future. Um, and so what the system sort of creates ultimately is a uh, um, the sort of strong incentive uh, for farmers to transition to more towards more environmentally friendly practice, more environmentally friendly or, or climate smart practices. Um, just to sort of point out that what the system also does is that it attempts to de-risk um, from a, a lender's perspective uh, farming activities, such that farmers are more resilient in the events of, sort of climate or weather or environmental shock. Um, Essentially, sort of increases the, sort of the, 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 sort of the view or the information that the, the lender has around that farmer and around their farming skill in terms of mitigating that risk. Um, and that's really what our, uh, our, our value proposition is um, to, uh, to, to, to local lenders, to the users of our system. We're saying use the system to both reduce your credit default risk um, and, and also to uh, uh, increase your client's uh, uh, debt service coverage ratio, which means that of their ability to, to raise debt. Um, but there are several other sort of stakeholders in this who we have to sort of, whose incentives we have to sort of, you know, line, align, um, and that includes funders. Uh, and very specifically, the FD Life, what the FD Life system does is create for them uh, an investment proposition with defined financial and environmental returns. And we frequently, frequently hear the complaints that there's lots of money, but there aren't projects. Um, well, we think that this gets around that project by creating, sort of, so I guess, sort of investable sort of propositions, buckets for money to, sort of, to be placed within, 
which is sort of replicable or highly replicable. Um, and then finally, the sort of the, the value proposition for the farmer is that you know, using use these practices to to, to reduce your uh, uh, sort of vulnerability to, to to environmental or weather shock, um, and then also hopefully to boost yields. So that's probably what the FG Life system is, and what we're seeking to achieve, and 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 how we attempt to subtract users to the system. Um, we were asked to provide you briefly with a, a theory of change um, that sort of, I guess sort of informs our sort of business approach. And this sort of goes a little bit deeper than just the sort of the value proposition that I was explaining. Um, simply put, you know, we understand that environmental degradation is driven largely by economic activity. Um, and that economic activity is, is again largely underpinned by systems of credit, um, which are blind to natural resource overuse. And what we mean by that is that when uh, a farmer takes a credit, um, they're obviously compelled to repay the credit with financial interest, um, with, with little sort of concern given to how that financial interest is repaid and the, the effect of the, on the environment of that. So what we see effectively is that it's a systematic problem, um, or a systemic problem, whereby uh, environmental degradation is sort of baked into the credit and money system. Um, and in response to that, what we're providing is a, is a system which allows, uh, uh, I guess, sort of um, the, the negative externalities associated with credit issue to be overcome um, and to pair financial interest with environmental interest in loan terms. Uh, and, and what we see is that this, this creates sort of a financially sustainable incentive for environmental restoration. Um, in terms of results, we started with a very limited pilot in 2013-2014, uh, which ended in 2015, with 75 farmers, smallholder farmers in Kenya, whereby they were issued with, with credits with environmental conditions attached. Um, and over the course of sort of many loan cycles, they repaid loans and progressively built up soil and water conservation systems on their land, um, systems designed to uh, reduce soil erosion on their land, soil erosion in that area being associated with uh, sort of increased rainfall, increased heavy episodic rainfall under, under sort of climate change projections. Um, in May 2016, we won the Global Innovation Lab for Climate Change Finance, um, which threw us into a, 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 I guess, into sort of a, a cooperation with a number of the members of the lab, which includes sort of big donors, big development banks, and, and, and some investment banks and funds. Um, and together with those, we are slowly now developing three country pilots, uh, Ghana, Rwanda, and probably Kenya, for 45,000 farmers to receive uh, the agricultural credit that they would have received anyway, as either working capital loans or, or, or input credits with environmental conditions attached. Um, key barriers and risks. Um, uh, financial institutions move at a, at a very slow pace. Um, and yeah, you know, that's often sort of difficult to sort of to manage as a as a as a small institution or small business with with sort of limited sort of runway essentially. Um, those sort of financial institutions often have a love hate relationship with funding agriculture and probably forestry as well. Anyway, um, often their stakeholders are sort of putting pressure on them to fund agriculture, but the, the, the difficulties inherent in that sector you know, they often don't want to do it. Um, and that is only exacerbated by, you know, I guess actually the, the solution that we're, 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 we're providing, the, the challenge that our solution sort of addresses, which is that there are growing concerns about the effect of climate change on, 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 on the, sort of the, the credit worthiness of farmers. Um, uh, some key lessons learned, and this slide just sort of, I guess, sort of presents what we thought would happen sort of coming into this space and then what has actually happened. Um, we thought there would be large amounts of funding for innovation, uh, and in reality there wasn't, but that is very, very constrained. Um, there is a lot of growth stage capital. Um, social impact investors who we thought would be interested in this space have only really begun to turn their eyes to sort of climate and environmental issues, and in any event don't really provide innovation capital. They provide growth stage capital. They want to provide funds to organizations that are already showing, um, or there are already revenue positive. Uh, and the third thing that we thought would happen is that we could raise funds from our original base in Kenya, um, 
and despite the sort of the heavy, sort of the high number of financing institutions there, um, we struggled a little bit because we felt that some resource allocation decisions or funding decisions were being made elsewhere. Um, and you know, what happened eventually was that you know we, we self-funded limited pilots, um, and through that sort of initial sort of proof of concept, we won a few prizes, very limited sums, thirty-five thousand dollars in total from Morgan Stanley and Swiss Re. Um, but that was kind of necessary to sort of or, or allowed us to sort of conclude our pilots. Um, at that point, so the, the fundraising process was so sort of arduous that we sort of nearly gave up. We simply didn't think the funds were out there. Um, but then we won one of four spots within the Global Innovation Lab for Climate Finance, which then pushed us into, I guess, the, sort of the orbit of, of other funders and large banks who are kind of looking for these types of, uh, um, I guess, sort of, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, defined financial and environmental investment propositions um, and, and source of some, some sort of promise in what we were doing in that respect. Um, um, that is the final slide. So uh, uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much.